I thought about it long and hard in the break. I'm taking the over 81 and a half on the Halos. I think they're going to hang around. They're going to keep Otani, and they're going to miss the playoffs. And they're going to lose them for nothing. 80.5 <laughs> you see on that board. Give it to me. The Texas Rangers, last year, everybody was drinking the Kool-Aid. They spent all kinds of money on Corey Seager, Marcus Semien, and they were actually worse than the Halos. They rattled off 68 wins uh, last season. 82.5, as you see on the board, 10 to 1 to win the West, 25 to 1 to win the pennant, 50 to 1, just like the Halos, to win the World Series. Uh, Vegas has them projected basically um, right on par with the Angels. Of course, the big addition with Texas this year, Jacob deGrom, as we can transition over to some of their fantasy assets. He is now age 34, heading into um, his age 35 season. He'll be 35, you know, in a couple months. Only 38 starts for Dick Jacob DeGrom over the last three years, but we know when he is pitching, he is arguably the best pitcher in baseball. He had a 3.08 ERA last year, but he also had a 1.56 XFIP. So he's a little bit unlucky. Double digit K per nine for his career, 14 last year, 14 the year before, 13 in 2020. You see some of these other bats there. Those first four bats starting from Simeon, I think they all have like 20 home run potential, but man, I really don't like this Texas lineup at all. I'd, I'd like some of the, you know, the pitching. They got some guys that, you know, maybe they can turn the clock back. Like, I don't know, John Gray showing us some things last year. Nate Eovaldi with the squad had some moments. Andrew Haney was okay at times, you know, with the Dodgers last year. Martin Perez, I think, was a little bit better than um, – he probably should have been, but he had some decent moments as well um, last year pitching, like a 2.89 ERA. I think that's an outlier. His XFIP was flirting around four, and usually he is a four ERA guy, but he did have a really good season, so I wanted to give him a little bit of love too. But is this Texas team better than the Angels? That's a good question. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I agree with you that you know the rotation is their strength. I really like their rotation. Yes, there are some injury concerns. We don't really know how many innings they'll get out of the group, but it's it's going to be their strength certainly. Um, you mentioned they definitely have some pop in the uh, in the lineup. Some bunch First of guys will get right. I mean, and then you look at Garcia. It's like yeah, he'll get you twenty five home runs, but he's probably going to hit two twenty as well with not a very good on base percentage. Um, I don't like their lineup. I'm with you there. I don't really know what to expect or, or from them. I don't know how successful they'll they'll be. I don't like their bullpen very much either. Um, I was honestly hoping that we would see a little bit more uh, hype um, maybe from, you know, just the public and baseball people in general that maybe might drive uh, some value for us to, to bet against Texas this year. I don't yeah. think I'd really touch their, uh, maybe their, their win total, but, you know, we talked about this last week and I actually was talking with a friend before I hopped on. There are some minus 200, minus 220 for Texas not to make the playoffs. I, I think that's a, that's a pretty good bet. Again, I was kind of hoping that, you know, we might see some uh, some steam come towards, you know, in support of Texas. But at, at minus 200, I think that's actually a pretty solid bet for them not to make the playoffs. I don't think they make it. I mean, you're going to get probably two, maybe three teams out of the AL East, whoever wins the Central. Uh, and then you got the Ashers and the Mariners. Like, I just don't think that this is a playoff team. I would I would lean with the under. And if something happens to Jacob DeGrom, they're definitely not a playoff team. Like, if this guy only finds a way to get 15 to 16 starts, I just don't I just don't see it, man. I the bottom part of their lineup, I think is atrocious. Like I think I mean, it's not even the bottom part, man. You you go through I mean, I know Tavares had, you know, he might be a late bloomer, good prospect. Yeah, actually showed. yeah. he looked good last year. Young's uh Young's a good prospect as well, but yep. Heim, Garcia, Miller, Grossman, who's fine against lefties. Like, it's not really a, a scary lineup. They spent a bunch of money on two guys, and they really don't have too much after that. Again, I'm with you. I'd be surprised if they finished better than fourth in their division. Yeah, I would lean with the under the 81 and a half. I think, you know, that is a pretty good bet for them not to make the playoffs. Uh, Josh Young is going to be a really good player in the league. Uh, most projections have him already in his first full season in the bigs for 20 homers and chipping in with a couple stolen bases. Uh, the average may not be ideal, uh, maybe just a 230, 240 average. Maybe he can get up to 250 uh, in his first full season, but I, you know, maybe – Maybe an everyday guy. I don't know. He can probably get to 500 plate appearances, but uh, I, I don't think he's going to win AL Rookie of the Year, but he's a nice little young piece. We didn't get to 